Welcome to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm so glad you tuned in. It's my hope with this podcast to help all of us gather information that might help those that need support dealing with this debilitating issue. Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Before we get started, let's get the formalities out of the way with the medical and privacy disclaimer. I am not a doctor or medical professional. The information on this podcast is from personal experiences and is meant for group support. Additionally, the information discussed is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any underlying conditions associated with neuropathy. All names here within are private and will not be shared with any outside sources. Please consult your health care provider before making any health decisions. If you have medical concerns or an immediate emergency, please contact your doctor or dial 911. Hello everyone, how are you doing? I was doing okay until today when I found out that my doctor does not have any of the opiates that I need for this month. So here's the problem. You know, I know there's an epidemic going on right now with medications or drugs that, you know, with fentanyl and those kind of things. But why are they doing this to us? Why are they putting a slowdown of what's being made or what's being delivered to pharmacies? We need the product. We need to have it for our pain. We cannot go a month or two months. They told me till April. And we're going to have withdrawals. You know, that's just not right. And I did write a letter to the uh, President of the United States, and I doubt that's going to give any help. But I just want to make sure that he's aware of this, what's going to happen. And, you know, never know if these individuals that are looking for their products from the pharmacy might have to look somewhere else for their, um, their pain to control it. And that's going to make situation even worse and that's what they need to realize but obviously they don't the government just you know just wants to take away the products that they know that are affecting the united states and the people that live here in which i'm okay with that i understand there is an epidemic going on but don't let it involve us that have prescriptions for these products and need them for our pain that's not fair so i wanted to leave that with you this morning before i started my podcast to help you understand what i'm going through oh and there's no way i can go to another pharmacy because these big chain pharmacies don't want to carry the product because they're afraid that they're going to get um you know, held up or, you know, have people coming in trying to steal the products from them. So, and again, that's another thing I understand, but, you know, but that keeps these pharmacies from carrying all these products. So that's why you're so limited to go to somebody, like even a doctor to prescribe it or to the pharmacy for these medications. So, you know, I don't know what else to do. She's checking to see if she has any other products that might help me tie me over until then, till April. But, you know, these are things that I have to worry about and I have to stress out about every month, you know, to make sure that they have my medication in. And it gets very stressful. So, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started with our episode today. So today we're going to be talking about the top 10 benefits of cannabis. One quick note though, before I get on to that lesson, let's talk about why is there such a stigma put around medical cannabis, weed, also saying that marijuana is the gateway drug and leads to everything else that goes on. I don't see that. Um, You know, for me, I use it medical It's medically used, uh, medical cannabis, of course. I have a card. Um, It's getting to a point, though, right now that you don't really even need a card anymore if you want something. Um, There are a whole bunch of stores opened up now that carry these products. And I know the older folks like myself, um, you know, when you think about those things, 
you think about um, how bad they could be and and what people are going to think about you and they won't understand why you're using it for your issues like for myself like I told you at the beginning of this episode was now I won't have anything to help me get through my overdrawals until April and that just ain't gonna work so I gotta find other means that are gonna help curve that you know that issue that I'm gonna have with withdrawals and it's just I think the stigma is kind of going away now um, there isn't very many people thinking about it now. They're just going to go ahead and do it because that's their individual choice. And they're hearing that these things do work for pain. And, you know, that's the one thing I, I just wish that some of these people would stop saying, and I'm talking about the government, would stop saying these things that, you know, it's bad for you and this could happen and that could happen and when it actually won't. And they're just trying to scare us. And if that's something that seems right for you to do, talk to your doctor. You know, um, at one point my doctor was not okay with me using any other, um, you know, like cannabis. To use it when I was going to be um, out of medication. Or if the point in time when the medication wears off, what do I do until I can take it again? Those things. And... Finally, he just agreed because he wasn't going to be able to make my uh, dosage of milligrams any higher than what they were. So he gave, he said, go ahead and just use it. If you have a medical card, you'll be all right, which I do. So that's the one thing I want to get away from the stigma is just call it for what it is. It's good medicine for us to help curve the uh, issues of pain during that period of time when we can't take it until our next dose of medication. So just remember those things. And again, if you decide to go this route, just talk with your doctor first. So now it's going to help me jump right into this next uh, episode here with the top 10 health benefits of cannabis. So when it comes to cannabis, it's a full CBD product, a molecule that affects the brain and improves its function without causing a high. So what can cannabis do for you if you have chronic pain? Cannabis contains several chemical components, some which are called cannabinoids, which of their chemical characteristics, cannabinoids have been connected to delivering relief from chronic, chronic pain. As a result, its byproducts like medicinal cannabis are frequently utilized to treat chronic pain. Next is lung capacity will improve. Apart from cigarettes, smoking cannabis like medicine does not hurt your lungs. A study discovered that cannabis helps the lungs expand their capacity rather than ha harming them. This is one of those that we might want to do a little bit more study on because I thought it didn't help your lungs at all like anything that you inhale. So I'll, I'll check on that. Uh, number three, cancer. Oral cannabinoids appear to be beneficial against chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. And some small studies have suggested that smoke marijuana may also assist in easing these symptoms. Some cancer cell researchers suggest that CBD and THC may either reduce or stop the growth of some cancers. However, every human trial that explored this concept found that while cannabinoids are safe medication, they are ineffective at managing and treating cancer. But I have heard that it does help with the vomiting during those periods of time when you're going through cancer treatments. Number four, it helps with depression. Depression is quite common, and most people are unaware that they have it. Some components can assist in stabilizing moods, which can aid in alleviating depression. You know, see, now when you talk about depression and pain, I believe myself that they go hand in hand. I have the pain. I also have depression. And, you know, I do take medications for the depression. But I think that's a lot of, um, a lot of issues that people have. And that's why, you know, they use cannabis for that reason. Number five is autism. 
Cannabis helps people relax and maintain control over their emotions. It can help youngsters with autism who have frequent violent mood swings and to help them control their behavior. And I've heard that that does help. Uh, actually, I saw a documentary on it too. Um, I'm not sure if the company was out of Oregon or Washington, but they were helping this one um, child that had issues with, um, you know, seizures and, and other issues. And it did help because during that time that she took it, she was fine. No issues arised. Number seven, Alzheimer's progresses slowly. Cognitive degeneration regulates and seed number of diseases, including Alzheimer's disease. Cognitive decline is almost unavoidable as we get older. The anti-inflammatories in cannabis, endocannabinoid, counteract the brain inflammation that causes Alzheimer's disease. Number eight, deal with arthritis-related pain. Cannabis is now widely available in lotions and balms for people living with arthritis. Both THC and CBD can help to cure those who are in intense pain. Number nine is help in the treatment of PTSD symptoms. PTSD affects anyone who has gone through a traumatic event, not only veterans. As it becomes legal, Researchers are looking into assisting, assisting those with PTSD. It's, it aids in regulation of the fight or flight response, stopping it from overreacting. Number 10, inflammatory bowel disease is treated with this medication. Cannabis can assist people who have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, THC, and cannabinoid have been shown to improve immune response while also interacting with important cells for the gut health. Cannabis helps in the filtration of germs and other toxic substances that induce gastrointestinal irritation. Mm, didn't know that one. So the easiest approach to avoid cannabis hangover, like alcohol-induced hangovers, is to consume the drug in moderation. Other preventative measures have yet to be proven scientifically. So here are some recommendations. Avoiding daily or near daily use, opting for low potency THC or THC to CBD products, and avoiding synthetic cannabinoids. A reliable source advocates non-smoking methods. Avoiding the use of deep inhalation techniques. And here's some remedies. People who are tired in the morning after consuming cannabis may need to sleep longer to feel better. Although caffeine may aid alertness, the body may still require additional sleep. People who have smoked cannabis may notice that their mouth is drier than usual the next day. If a person has dry mouth, they should drink plenty of water, especially with coupled cannabis and alcohol, which I think you know, we shouldn't have any alcohol to eat at all. Anyone nauseated should try to consume small meals often over the next day. The following therapies may also help with cannabis-related side effects. Eat a well-balanced, nutrient-dense diet. Eating a well-balanced, nutrient-dense diet can improve a person's overall health. Use a narcotic pain reliever. Pain relievers can help with the headaches and other bodily aches and pains. Avoid caffeine. Caffeine can help you sleep, but it also can make you dehydrated. Cannabis is undoubtedly one of the most divisive issues in today's society, both legally and in terms of health. More research on marijuana's health advances is required for both sides of the argument can agree on its use in medical and recreational contexts. In the meantime, if you are curious about some potential health benefits of marijuana, you should consult your, with your doctor first. They can give you complete details about the advantages and disadvantages of medicinal marijuana, as well as the, as well as the legalities of acquiring a medical marijuana card in your area. Never try to treat a medical condition on your own with any drug or substance. This includes marijuana and other plant-based sources.
And you got to remember that even though a state has legalized, you know, cannabis in your area, that doesn't mean that the federal have. The federal um, is still under the Schedule 1 and those products are illegal. So you have to be aware of that also. So I have a little bit more time left. I want to talk about uh, one other thing. How to cope with your chronic pain. How to cope with your chronic pain. Number one, maintain a healthy lifestyle. Getting exercise and maintaining a healthy diet can go a long way for those who experience chronic pain. Gentle exercises such as yoga, physical therapy can help immensely. Number two, pay attention to stress levels. Expert advice is extremely valuable, especially if you begin experiencing chronic pain recently and need help understanding your condition. Doctors and other experts can provide an insight that you may not have considered and may recommend the most appropriate treatments. It's easy to fall into the trap of trying to solve the problem yourself through online research but this can lead to misdiagnosing the issue and potentially spending money and time on treatments you don't have need to. And that's one thing that, you know, I do everything for myself only because I've had this for so long, the neuropathy. I know what works and what doesn't work for my, for my body. So that's why I I'm not trying to diagnose or give you any perfect answers that are going to cure for you or are going to help you. I do the things that help me. I just recommend that you either listen to my podcast or look at the material that I've um, dug up for this episode on the internet and decide for yourself along maybe along with your doctor's advice and he'll be able to help you with that. Um, Next one is practice self-care. A great way to lower stress levels is to practice self-care. Self-care looks different for everyone and, this, and essentially refers to activities and practices that make you feel calm and centered. Common examples of self-care including doing yoga, creating art, drinking calming tea, watching your favorite TV show, reading a book, taking a bath, playing with a pet. So there's many studies out there that are going on um, in regards to cannabis. And they just want to know, you know, like the study here that they found 3 in 10 individuals with chronic pain use cannabis. So, you know, evidence is mixed about whether medical cannabis serves as a substitute for prescription opiates or other pain treatments. So this whole thing brings me back to, at the beginning of this episode, what am I to do now that I have to wait until April to get the medication opiate that I need in order to control my pain, but now I have to wait until April, and I'm going to be going through withdrawals those next two months, and is that fair to me? No. I... <laughs> There just there is ways that they can figure out who's taking it for positivity and who's not who's doctor shopping. You know, uh, I don't know. It, it's just something I know Congress is looking into it now, and cause, um, our president asked them to to see if there's anything that could be done to lower the schedule on that product. So. It can be offered to many others. You know, I have a medical marijuana card. I can get it here where I live, no problem. But you got to remember that it may be legal in your state, but it isn't legal with the, um, you know, the federal government. You can still be incarcerated or, you know, those kind of things if they catch you with it. You know, I just wish that they would come to understand that, you know, cannabis is very important it is a medicine they believe that it has no effect to help you with um your issues that you have that there's no use for it, and it's a gateway drug and that's why they're not legalizing it well you know what look how many people are now turning to it and using it and are finding relief 
you know, in this, in these products that, yeah, sure, you don't know what's being, how it's being uh, grown. You don't know if they're using fertilizers on it or what's taking place. But right now, at my point in time, and at the age I'm at, I just want to be able to live out the rest of my life pain-free at least. Um, and I deal with pain 24 hours a day. Even though I take opiates, it's, the pain's still there. It never takes it completely 100% away. And I've never had a 100% day at all. So, And I think many of you out there haven't either. Um, you know what? Just try your best. See what other options are out there besides, you know, your medication that may help you also on uh, combining the two. Make sure you talk to your doctor before you do any changes like that. And hopefully this will all work out for all of us. Today's going to be a very stressful day for me until I find out if there's another medication the pharmacy has. But you know what? Thank you all for listening. I'm glad I can do this for all of us and give us some focus on products and other things in our lives that can help us reduce the pain that we deal with every single day because of neuropathy or any type of nerve issues. Remember, go to my website and check out the affiliate um, that I have, the companies that are selling their products. There's some good products out there that help with pain. And some of them are at some real good pricing. So I have that up. Take that opportunity. Go to Facebook. Go to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. And hopefully those things there can help you out. Until next Monday, I will see you then. Bye. As we come to a close, it's my hope this podcast and other sources, such as product reviews that I have discussed today, can better our lives and give us some relief dealing with neuropathy. This episode plus others are posted every Monday on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And finally, whatever life throws at you, even if it hurts you, just be strong and fight through it. Remember, strong walls shake, but never collapse. Talk to you next Monday.